All right, boys and girls, we're back and we're continuing our discussion of periodic properties. Uh, today we're going to talk about the periodic property of electronegativity. Now that's something we defined at the end of the last video, and the concept of electronegativity becomes very important in our next chapter when we start talking about chemical bonding. The definition of electronegativity is the ability um, of an atom to attract electrons in a chemical bond. So if an atom is really good at attracting electrons to itself, we say it has a high electronegativity. If it's not very good at attracting electrons to itself, we of course say it has a low electronegativity. So electronegativity values, which we abbreviate with the capital E and N, are assigned on a relative scale. The highest is 3.98 and that is the electronegativity of the element fluorine, and the lowest is 0 0.70, and that is assigned to the element francium. So just by looking at this chart, it should be easy to tell that when we move to the right, across a period, electronegativity increases, and when we move down a group, electronegativity decreases. And you will notice that the noble gases do not have an electronegativity value. So these guys right here don't have an electronegativity, and that's because they don't need to attract electrons to themselves because they do not form chemical bonds. So we ignore the noble gases when we talk about electronegativity values because it is highly unusual that they form bonds. So, once again, the highest is fluorine, and the lowest is francium. So why do you think fluorine would be so good at attracting electrons to itself? Think about this for a minute. Think about atomic radius. Now, if you said, when I go across period number two, from lithium to beryllium to boron to carbon to nitrogen to oxygen to fluorine, the atomic radius decreases. Therefore, the atoms can attract electrons to themselves more easily because they are so tiny when you go across a period. So you're right, it has something to do with the atomic radius. When we move to the right, the radius decreases. So the electrons we're trying to attract are going to be closer to that positive nucleus. And so in each case, when you go across a period, kiddos, you will notice that the electronegativity of an atom increases. Now, how about going down a group? Let's see if you can figure that one out. You'll notice um, hydrogen to lithium to sodium to potassium to rubidium to cesium to francium. The electronegativity, of course, decreases. Why do you think the electronegativity of an atom decreases when I go down a group? That's right. If you related that to the atomic radius again, you would be correct. Because when I go down a group, the radius increases, doesn't it? So the electrons we're trying to attract are farther and farther away from that positive nucleus. There's all sorts of shielding going on as we gain energy levels. So it becomes more and more and more difficult for atoms that have a larger radius to attract electrons to themselves in a bond than those that have a small radius. Okay, so at the beginning of our periodic property um, discussion, Several videos ago, we talked about atomic radius, and I said that is the most important of all periodic properties. And if you notice, we talked about atomic radius when we talked about all other periodic properties, because the radius of an atom determines many of these other properties. Okay? Now, once again, why do you think noble gases do not have an electronegativity value? And once again, it relates to our definition. It's the ability of an atom to attract electrons in a chemical bond, and so the noble gases do not form bonds. Now, that's not completely true, but it's almost completely true. Some of the larger noble gases we have been able to get re to, to react with very electronegative elements, but for the most part, noble gases do not form bonds. Okay?
All right, let's wrap this section on periodic properties up with a few practice questions. Now, for this, we're going to need to use our, need to use our periodic uh, tables. So take a few minutes and see if you can answer these four questions at the bottom of the page. Um, what we're going to be doing is arranging um, atoms in order of increasing radius, increasing ionization energy, increasing electronegativity, and, and decreasing ionic radius. So go ahead and try to take care of these by yourselves, and then tune back into the video and see how you did. All right, welcome back. First one, let's arrange the following elements in order of increasing radius. So increasing means I want to put the smallest one first, and I want to put the largest one at the end. That's what increasing means, okay? And I have one, two, three, four. I have five blanks here. I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five. So let's find these on our periodic table. We have strontium, tellurium. So let's find strontium. Strontium is right here, kiddos. And now we want to find tellurium, and that's right over here. Let's see what the other ones are. Magnesium, sulfur, and silicon. Magnesium, sulfur, and silicon. So those are the five elements. Let's go ahead and number our periods just so we can get an idea of how many energy levels these atoms have. So that's going to make it easier for us to determine their radius. Period one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, so it looks to me like the smallest um, are going to be those listed on period number three, magnesium, silicon, and sulfur. Which one of those has the smallest radius? Do you remember? That's right. When you go across a period, radius decreases, so sulfur would be the smallest radius. So let's go ahead and fill that in. Sulfur Let's use a different colored pen here. Sulfur would have the smallest radius. And then what would come after that? We've taken care of that one. Then silicon. Alrighty. And then magnesium. All right. So those all have electrons on the third energy level. Those are going to be the smallest. So sulfur is the smallest, silicon, and then magnesium. And now let's take a look and see where the other two are. We have strontium and tellurium. Now they have electrons on the fifth energy level. Two energy levels more than the other three elements we just talked about. Which one of those is the next largest? Yeah, if you said tellurium, you would be correct. Because remember, when you go across a period, they get smaller, don't they? So tellurium is the next largest, and the largest of that group of five would be strontium. So we would have tellurium and then strontium. So if that's the order you got, good job. Now remember, this is the most important of all, I think, periodic properties. Because these other ones um, will be based upon our answer for the first one. Okay? All right, next, let's arrange these elements in order of increasing ionization energy. Okay, so increasing, that means lowest to highest. We're going to have five blanks. One, two, three, four, five. Notice I have the same elements here as I did up here. So which one of those is going to be the easiest to take an electron from? Remember, it depends upon the radius. Which are easy to take an electron from? Those that have a small radius or those that have a large radius? That's right. If you said the largest would have the lowest ionization energy, the largest radius would have the lowest ionization energy, you are correct. So if you said strontium and then tellurium and then magnesium and then silicon, and finally, sulfur would have the highest ionization energy because it's the smallest of that group. You would be correct. See, let's look at our periodic table, kiddos. Here's sulfur way over here. Isn't it the one that's up highest and furthest to the right? So of that group of five elements, it is the smallest radius, so it's going to be the hardest to take an electron from. All right, next up, let's go ahead and arrange these in order of increasing electronegativity. So we want to go lowest electronegativity to highest. Oh, I forgot the H up there. All right. 
we have five blanks again. One, two, three, four, five. So which of these would be the, uh, would have, let's see, the, the worst ability of attracting electrons to itself in a bond? Would it be the biggest ones, the large radius, or the smallest ones, those with the small radius? Think about that for a minute. If you said the lowest electronegativity would have the largest radius, you are correct. So if you put strontium first, then tellurium, then magnesium, then silicon, then sulfur, you would be correct. Now you could check those by using this chart up here. We could find those five elements and make sure that we're right. So we would think strontium would be the lowest. So let's see, strontium's right here, 0.95. Then tellurium, tellurium's 2.1, okay, that's higher. Then magnesium, uh, 1.3, woo, that does go against our train of thought here. Then silicon, up to 1.9, and sulfur would have the highest. So it is a bit hazier here. Uh, tellurium has a higher electronegativity than magnesium. But for our predictions, for our predictions, I feel pretty good about those. Predictions are not always perfect. All right. Now, finally, let's arrange these uh, ions here in order of decreasing radius. So that means we want, let's see, decreasing. Doesn't that mean I want the largest radius first, right? And the smallest radius last. So let's see. Uh, we're going to need our periodic table again. Let's go ahead and clear this page so it's easier to see. And we have F negative and SE2 negative. So F negative, all right, and then SE2 negative. Then we have BE2 positive, beryllium 2 positive, and then BR1 negative. So finally, Br1 negative. So let's see. We want the one that is the largest first. There's only going to be four blanks this time. One, two, three, four. Now, which one would you predict would be the largest of those? Wouldn't it be the ones with uh, the one with the most energy levels? So let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it looks like the largest is either going to be SC2 negative or BR negative, right? So let's see, SC2 negative has 34 protons and 36 electrons. BR negative has 35 protons, and it's negative 1, so 36 electrons. So they both have the same number of electrons. But SC2 negative has one less proton, doesn't it? So that means the electrons can get farther away. There aren't as many positive charges in the nucleus. So if you said SE2 negative would be the largest, you would be correct. Let's cross that one off. And then BR negative would come in next. Right, because it has the most energy levels. And now we have a choice between Be2 positive and F negative. So Be2 positive has four protons and only two electrons, because it's two positive. F negative has nine protons, and it's negative one, so ten electrons. So let's see, which one would be the next largest? Two electrons or ten electrons? <laughs> Probably 10 electrons would be farther away. Um, it's an, um, it has more electrons than it has protons, so I feel very confident in saying that F negative would be the next largest, and the smallest of that group would be beryllium 2 positive, because it only has two electrons, and it has four protons pulling those two electrons in. Okay? All right, how did you do on that? If you got them all right, you should give yourself a pat on the back. And if you mess the order up here on this third one, don't feel too badly. Sometimes our predictions don't work out as nicely as we'd like them to. All right. Thanks for tuning in. We get to talk about bonding in our next video. See you soon. Bye-bye.